Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, God is doing amazing things in our lives this month. And then the Lord has said to us that this month, the glory of Jesus is being made manifest in our lives. And that's exactly why we've been sharing with you on the glory of Jesus. Jesus, praise God. Now we're going to continue today, but before we go into that, can we call for that daily bread? You remember, right? Praise God. Never forget to make demand for your daily bread. David actually said, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Now, he wasn't saying, bless the Lord and, and, and don't forget to thank him for his benefit. He, is actually, he was actually saying, don't forget to take your benefits. When you bless the Lord, don't forget that you have benefits to receive. Praise God. Now that's why we're doing this every day on this broadcast. So are you ready? Join me in faith and say, Father, I make demand for my benefits today. Even my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, these things I've, sharing, I've been sharing with you since the beginning of this month, it's so important that if you would pay attention to this, I assure you, in one month, just in one month, your life will be transformed. I'm telling you the truth. John chapter 17, Jesus speaking in verse 22. He was talking to the Father and he says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Wow. So Jesus is concerned that we function in the same oneness that he and the Father functions in. Now that's to tell you that he holds nothing back. That's to tell you that the Father holds nothing back. Praise God. Think about it. Jesus said, I, I, I want us to be one. I want them to be one with us. The same way we are one. You see, me and you, the Father, we are one. And I want them to be one with us. And I was telling you yesterday, this can only be real or this can only function by the Holy Spirit. So actually what Jesus was referring to when he said the glory that you have given me, I have given them. He was referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the glory of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the glory of Jesus. Hey, the Holy Spirit is the glory of the church. Take the Holy Spirit from the church. The church is just a combination of human beings. And you know what that means? Everybody with his own idea. But the Holy Spirit is the one that brings us in line with the oneness of the Father. Now, how does this work? Listen, you've got to pay attention with this. Because now, I want you to understand something. Uh, there are some thoughts the Father has shared with me. And... As I see the days approaching, I'm more conscious of seeing how we can communicate these truths to you. Jesus is coming soon. Yes, he is. We are getting to that place of entering into the real rest that this whole thing we're doing is all about. It's not so far away. It's not so far away. Now, sometimes we may say, we don't want to get into certain controversies, but you see, we have to be careful to understand that number one, it's not about how much we announce that Jesus is coming that will make him come. It's not by how much we try to get people to reason like us that will make him come. Jesus himself said, I am building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He doesn't need to tell you how and where he's building that church and not that he's building it in a specific location. He's doing it. 
And, and it's either you're a part of it or you're not a part of it. If you're a part of it, you will know by the witness of the Spirit of God that is working in you. If you're not part of it, then forget it. There is nothing you can do about it because you will just be there and arguing and criticizing and, and, and all sort of things. Just like, you know, today I realize social media is trying to give the church an identity. Now that's something we must reject in its entirety. Bloggers cannot be your light. And so you see what people do today. They take this a clip from this preacher. They take the clip from another preacher. And then with all those clips, they, they, they try to say something to you. Understand something the devil is doing today. He's, he's sowing doubts in the hearts of people. He's sowing doubts in the hearts of people. And you as a child of God, if you don't hold yourself firm in his love doubt will be sown into your heart and when that happens you will be part of those whom he said before that day comes there will be a falling away suddenly you find believers who who used to believe things that are true waking up to say i don't think i believe in that anymore why because of doubts that have been sown into your heart. Now, when you let doubts like that from an outside force affect you, the problem is you never knew Jesus in the first place. If you allow what another person says about Jesus to affect your belief in him, then you never knew him. And if you never knew him, then you must have just been wasting your time all this while. Yeah. You see, I was talking to someone recently and, and we we're just talking, I said, look, a time will come and it's very soon. We'll just lay the truth bare. Because sometimes there are certain truths you know that the Lord have taught you. But um, you just feel, look, if I communicate this thing like this, a lot of people will misunderstand it. But you know, the truth is in the days of Jesus, he got to the point, he asked the, the Jews, why do you not understand my speech? It's because you cannot hear my words. So not everyone will understand the truth. Not everyone will be, will be able to accept the truth. So why should we be concerned with those that cannot accept the truth and hoard it when those that are hungry for the truth are there waiting for it? So there's a time that there's going to be a release from the Spirit of God and we are going to speak truth for what it is. And that's to also tell you that the end is so approaching. When Noah was building that ark, remember, not everyone believed in him. Majority did not believe in what he was doing. A lot of people wondered at what he was doing. Others cursed him. Others said all kinds of things about him. But guess what? One day, he finished that work. One day, he called all the animals as the Lord directed him. And they all entered into the ark. And the doors were shut. And the rains came and the flood destroyed the whole world. How many people were saved at that time? They were the only ones who believed. I'm telling you the truth, in the whole world, <laughs> only eight people believed and they believed and they were walking at it they believed they were walking at it thank you lord jesus i pray i pray for you that your life will be part of those that the lord is building as his church i pray that for you seriously and as on prayer you should take seriously also Forget about the noise. Forget about all the distractions that are happening. The world is trying to get you distracted. Now I realize why the Lord said, hey, don't say anything throughout the month of January. There are things that are going to come up. Don't say anything about it. Don't speak for, don't speak against. Don't say anything. I was sharing with someone, I said, wow, I don't think I've ever been tempted you know, to speak <laughs> like this month of January. 
But the word of the Lord kept me because I remember what he's told me to do. Listen, brothers and sisters. We're approaching the end. And as we're approaching the end, as God is releasing the truth, Satan also is throwing his last arrow of distraction. This is not the time to even look at what somebody is preaching. This is the time to begin to access what have I believed. In all these years of hearing, what have you believed? Because the truth is we all have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit is in you. If you have been born again, if you've not been born again, then there is no point. You're, you're, you're wasting your time trying to judge between right from wrong. You need to first get saved. And you need to receive the Holy Spirit inside you. You need to know that the Spirit of God is now inside you. Now that's when you can begin to talk. You can talk if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You can let, let unbelievers tell you what is right in the church. You can't. You can't let unbelievers tell you whether you should give offering or not, whether you should give tithe or not. You can't let unbelievers tell you that. You can't let unbelievers tell you, oh, pastors are eating money, and so what? How is it their business? It's not their business. Oh, no, but, 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 the, but the church, no, it's never their business. Allow God to deal with his church. He knows who he's true. He, know, he knows who he has commanded and who he has not commanded. So you, because some people are, 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 are running, running foul or running rogue, and you now say, oh, I'm not going to do this again, and something God has commanded you to do. Who, who, who's deceived? You. So, uh, when pastors are eating tight, because of that, me, I'm not paying my tithe again. Who's deceiving who? Who's cheated? You! There is no church that have gone underground because people were not paying tithe. Never. <laughs> Never. But you see, it is best you're doing something right. And when God comes, he tells you, oh, you were not doing it perfectly. Oh, Lord, but, but you were doing it. Then for you to say, you know what, I'm not doing it. Then you do nothing. And, and when judgment comes, you'll be found guilty. Because God will judge. And you can't say, oh, one preacher, eh, where is the Holy Spirit in you? That's the question you're going to be asked. What did the Holy Spirit teach you? John said it. We don't need that any man should teach us. As the Holy Spirit teaches us and it's true. So if you're convinced that the Holy Spirit have told you not to tithe, not to give offerings, oh, stand with it and be ready to defend yourself. But if you are saying because of the teaching of a man, you're in trouble. Because the Bible said the just shall live by faith. His own faith. If your faith is wrong, then you will face the judgment. Neither, neither should you be doing it because somebody taught you to do it. Yes, you might start from there. But then you must go deeper with the Lord and say, Lord, can you teach me the truth concerning this? I put up a challenge one time. I said, if there's anyone that can come out and say the Holy Spirit taught him that it's wrong to tithe. I need to find that one person. Because I know there is none. So how are you sure? Oh, there is none. Because he's not the author of confusion. I know he has told me. He has taught me concerning tithe. And so has he taught others also. People think we are just being traditional and following biblical. You see, being traditional is one thing. Understanding the tradition 
understanding the origin of the tradition and how long the purpose of this tradition is another. People who don't understand it will not even know what they are keeping. But those who understand the tradition will say, wow, in every generation, they will keep it up. So the Holy Spirit in us, that's, that's why I'm sharing all these things with you. The Holy Spirit in us is the one that brings us into oneness with the Father, oneness with Jesus. And that's the glory of Jesus. He's not going to tell you something different from what he told Jesus. He's not going to tell you something different from what the Father have said. They are one. John said it. He said there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are green one. Now, telling you of the oneness of God, Jesus now said he wants us to come into that oneness with God. No wonder Jesus said when the Holy Spirit speaks, he's not going to speak of himself. He will take from me and he shall. So the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you anything new today, brothers and sisters. He's not telling us anything new today. Everything the Holy Spirit is dealing on us with us today is the same thing that he's dealt with the Father. It's the same thing that he's dealt with Jesus. It's the same thing that he's dealt with the old prophets of old. The greatest deception theologians bring is to do that dichotomy between the New Testament and the Old Testament. I'll tell you the truth. It is one. It's one spirit. The same spirit that was walking from the Old Testament, as they call it, from Genesis, from the very beginning, is the same spirit that is walking today. He did not change. Nothing changed about his operations. He is only bringing us into light with the truth. God never said, from now on, this is New Testament and this was Old Testament. No! It is preachers. Follow the voice of God, the one who's speaking inside you. Follow Him. His job is to bring you into oneness. His job is not... See, this oneness is not about arguments. This oneness is not about saying, I'm right, you're wrong. This oneness is about fellowshipping. You fellowship with the Father. And John said it in 1 John chapter 1, saying, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. How do we have that fellowship? By the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, I'll tell you a mystery. I don't need you to agree with me before we can walk together. No. No, never. I only need you to agree with the Spirit of God as in you. If the Spirit of God in you is the same Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God that is in me is the same Spirit of God, then let's walk by Him. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to grow one day out of our prejudice and, 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 and realize that we are saying the same thing. Because because of the place of knowledge and understanding, we may think we are different. But the more we grow, the more we follow Him. The more we grow, the more we follow Him. One day we'll realize that, oh, why were we even fighting? We've been saying the same thing all along. <laughs> Just from different aspects. But I pray, see, because that's what the Lord is doing. That's what I'm sharing, what I'm sharing with you. That's what the Lord is doing today. He's bringing us to that place of oneness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the one at work in us. You are doing this in the church, which is the Lord's body. And bringing everyone to obey that which you have spoken, even from the beginning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. There is a perfection that is coming into your life. There is a perfection coming into your body. There is a perfection from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Everything about you is coming into oneness. Aligning to the truth of what the Father 
wanted from the beginning. And that's taking place in your life right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.